If you have been taken off your feet by the new raging thing on the internet regarding painting miniatures, as if we had just discovered how to make fire, invented the wheel, air fryers all at once, I'm going to say this one thing before even starting. It is not new, but it is revolutionary and it is awesome. Welcome to the world of painting with washes and translucent paints. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this technique to get amazing results in miniature painting. If you are absolutely new to painting miniatures, you will learn a technique that will allow you to have great results with minimal effort. And if you are an experienced veteran painter, a way to get an army ready for the table in a few weeks as opposed to a few months. My name is Miguel, this is Russ Wash, and let's get to Slap Chop and Wash Painting. This is a comprehensive tutorial in a brief format, so get ready because we have lots to cover in a few minutes. We are going to see what it is painting with washes, why we should do it, how we prepare the minis to do it and how to get also our minis to the next level with simple and easy steps. Let's get to it. You probably have heard the term slap chop, which has become quite viral as of late in the miniature painting community. The word is gimmicky, nothing new under the sun has been invented. Painting with translucent paints has been done for a long time. Other names we can find for using washes are glazing, painting in grisaille and glazing, or more recently, painting with contrast or speed paints, which are brands used to do exactly this. Slap chop has become very famous recently due to a couple of viral videos, but painting with washes is something some of us have been doing way before even Games Workshop started releasing their contrast range. It has become so popular that nowadays any brand worth its salt will release a range of colors that work well for this technique. But it is not necessary to have paints from any of these brands, in fact mixing a normal paint or artistic ink with some decent medium and using that can achieve great results. Mixing is a little more tricky than getting your paint from the pot to just apply it, so the usefulness of products made already for this purpose is undeniable. So what is painting with washes? What we see here is painting with a translucent or semi-translucent paint that allows us to see what is underneath it. We are tinting the surface as opposed to painting it. Imagine we have a white surface and then we put a translucent plastic yellow sheet on top of it. It will become the color of that sheet, yellow. If you add another color on top in the same way, both the yellow and the subsequent color will fuse together, altering the color we perceive in the surface. This is what we do with wash painting. Moreover, if our surface has ridges or textures, the washes will tend to flow into the cavities and dry in there. This means the pigments they have will sediment there, becoming more saturated and adding to the perception of depth, which creates natural shadows and highlights. Miniature painters have to exaggerate these shadows and highlights to make their miniatures look more natural. Traditionally, this was achieved by layering, which meant painting the surfaces we needed to be shaded or highlighted with more saturated or desaturated opaque paints. Although effective, this method is time-consuming and achieving smooth results usually needs mixing the paints and carefully placing them on the right place. Or that and a combination of advanced brush skills such as feathering, glazing, wet blending, and other similar stuff. So why use washes? Washes do all these by design, which saves us the time and effort of having to do this manually. The key reason for using washes and translucent paints is the results that we can achieve with them in a short period of time. Washes are translucent, so the hues combine between themselves as filters instead of by mixing the pigments. We can achieve awesome results with just knowing how to put our brushes on a miniature. Nothing else is needed. The amount of fine motor skills needed to master this is drastically reduced. So for those of you who don't have the experience, the pulse or the ability to do very fine detailing, it is an absolute winner. Overall then, the two key factors that make painting with washes a great asset for those of you who want to paint miniatures are both time and easiness. Although painting with washes is easy and straightforward, there are two key factors that we need to pay special attention to before we start doing it. The first one is paying special attention to thoroughly cleaning our miniatures from any flash or mold lines. This is because these create surfaces where our washes will decant and dry. They are quite often placed in a natural areas of the miniature for shadows and highlights to be at. Nothing destroys a perfectly painted miniature faster than having an ugly flash line in the wrong spot. Use an X-Acto knife, some files and a little bit of patience to go through those. If your miniatures are made of soft plastic, very sharp knives and a wood burner are great tools to get rid of them. 
and if they are made of metal or hard plastic, both a hobby knife and some files are the tools to go to. The second one is priming. Priming is super important when painting with washers. This is why I put it in capital letters here. Priming your miniatures one way or another will affect the end results significantly. I will argue this is the main part of the process and one you need to pay special attention to. Because we are going to tint over, we need our miniatures to be painted with a light color. We can decide to go towards a bone, a white or a light gray color. You can even experiment with light yellows, greens or blues. It is important though that the final value is as light as possible because washes will create natural highlights when they dry in the recesses and the higher the value, the better those highlights will look. It is for you to decide the way you're going to prime your miniatures. There are a couple of methods we all use. Brush priming, which is priming with a brush and a regular paint, is the one most of us learn with. Simply get a brush and after you have washed and let your miniature dry, paint it with the light color of your choice. Rattle cans are faster than brushes, but on the other side, they need a good place to be used and also to take into consideration things such as humidity, particles in the air, distance to the miniature, they are sometimes temperamental. I personally like rattle cans, but I have some horror stories with them too. Try to paint in a dry, cool place with good ventilation at a distance of around 20 to 30 centimeters from your miniature, around one foot more or less. Do this with slight passes and touches of the spray can. It is better to do this in two or three thin coats, letting them dry in between. Too close to the mini and you will get too much paint on it, killing the details too far and the paint will dry mid-air, creating a dusty effect. Too much paint at once and you will have the same issue as spraying too close. The third option is using an airbrush. You don't even need to own an expensive one. This one I have here cost me 20 bucks and it is great for priming my miniatures. But learning to use an airbrush is a different topic on its own. On the other hand, the amount of money you save compared to rattle cans and the better control you have over the amount of paint you spray and where you spray it are the obvious advantages to using an airbrush. If you want vibrant, rich colors, pure white priming is the go-to. But for faster results and a little grittier approach, then the next method is better. And it's here where Slap Chop is born. The second method saves us a lot of time when using washers, although they look slightly grittier, which on itself is not a bad thing. Just bear in mind that the paint jobs will look differently. This second method is known as Grisale, nowadays called Slap Chop. For this, you have to use a darker color, like black, gray, or whatever. Then you have to let it dry, and then you add highlights with a lighter color. Grisale is sketching values before applying color on top. This will create the dark and light areas of the miniature before adding color to the surfaces. Think of it as if you were looking at a miniature in black and white and then you colorized it. To do the latter, you paint with washes on top. That's it. That is a slap chop. The way you add those highlights to the miniature is the technical part of this method. And then here you have the following. Dry brush the highlights, paint sanital highlights, or sketch the highlights. For the dry brushing method, start with black or a dark gray or some other low value color and then dry brush over this. To dry brush, the best type of brushes are usually makeup brushes as they have a particularly well suited head with thick tufts. Just dab the tip on the paint of choice and then paint a surface with it, kitchen towels, a piece of cardboard or similar, until the paint becomes faint. And then it's when you start painting the miniature with fast strokes all over the place. This will build up on the raised surfaces, making them lighter, which will then become the highlights when we wash the miniature. You can even add extra steps to the process like starting from black, dry brushing gray, dry brushing white, and painting on top of it all. Senital highlights are achieved by using a rattle can or an airbrush. From the top of the miniature and with a 30 to 45 degree angle, highlight the miniature, making sure you hit all the surfaces from that angle, as to build highlights in all areas and not only the head and shoulders. An airbrush is the best tool for this due to the amount of control you can achieve with it, but it is doable with rattle cans too. The last one is sketching highlights, which is also a little bit more complex because you need to get the correct dilution for the paint as well as to have a good sense of the placement for those highlights. It is also quite time consuming, so I do not really recommend it for new painters or those of you who want to paint lots of miniatures in a short period of time. 
After your miniatures are primed, then there are a few extra things you can do, like for instance, pre-washing the whole miniature. This will add an extra layer of shading and even a hue to the miniature and make the whole process faster in some cases. The most common one is giving a translucent wash of black to the whole miniature before applying any colors. It is very important that this wash is subtle enough so it does not tint the whole surface of the miniature but mostly the recesses. For this I recommend watering it down or even better adding medium and flow enhancer which will make it easier to go into the deep areas of the miniature. Washes can be applied in several ways but the meat and potatoes of the technique is getting a paint to work as a translucent glaze and applying it on the surface we want to colorize. These can be any of the brands out there that create wash like paints or a mixture of paint with medium, water can be a medium too, or artistic inks in various types of dilutions. Whichever you choose, things become very interesting when we apply two or more coats of washes on top of each other. For instance, when I paint Orca Skin, I want it to be vibrant to the point of becoming almost cartoony. For this, I use an undercoat of yellow and then add a wash of green on top. My usual method is using the lighter of two colors as the undercoat and then tint it on top with the most saturated one of the two because it is easier to darken a color with a wash but it's almost impossible to do the opposite only with this. Once you start painting this way there is not much more to it you just add colors at your own will and you make sure that you stay within the lines if you stain something you didn't want to paint it with your primer highest value usually white and paint on top of it again with your washes although washes can do a lot of things sometimes using regular paints is the best approach for instance painting eyes weapons or special effects don't shy away from this if you feel your miniature has lost brightness you can always add some highlights here and there if you use paints that reactivate for instance like the army painter speed paint or some inks, painting pure white on top of these paints will make it mix with the speed paint and become a desaturated version of itself, which is an awesome way of getting highlights with minimal effort. You can use washes to paint your bases, no issue. In fact, they work very well in unison with any basic materials you have nearby, so don't shy away from doing the bases the same way you do your minis. Once you finish painting, my last piece of advice is varnishing the miniatures with any method you want, rattle cans, airbrush, brush, be careful with this one if your paints reactivate and letting the miniatures dry thoroughly before touching them or adding tufts to the bases. The next thing you need to do after you have painted a couple of miniatures this way is to start trying different combinations of undertones and washes on top, trying light sources, effects, any other crazy stuff your heart desires. And if you haven't done it yet, why don't you subscribe to the channel, activate notifications, watch this video next, and remember, my name is Miguel, this is Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso, adios.